So let's welcome everybody back to our uh, final uh, spring semester online seminars by our adjunct faculty. Today we welcome Mr. Paul Larner. Mr. Larner, in addition to being the uh, chairman of the board of directors for Wakefield Country Day School, is also the CAO of Bornado, New York Stock Exchange VNO, um, and he graduated with his JD from University of Virginia. Thank you, Mr. Larner, for being here. He's going to teach us how to make money using our own credit cards. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just add the word former to the CAO of Bornado Realty Trust. <laughs> so um, this is the last in our lecture series that we've conducted over the last five weeks. We look forward to getting some feedback from the various participants um, so that we can make a decision whether to continue this series um, or leave it as is. So we'll be circulating a survey shortly from Suzanne and hope to hear your response so we can make the best informed decision. So I don't think there are many of you don't know me already, but um, I'm Paul Larner and I love to travel. I started traveling when I was 20 years old by uh, taking a freighter from Mobile, Alabama to Casablanca. I think I've calculated that I've been to 60 plus countries and I'm a huge believer in uh, my own saying that travel is education. I also am speaking to you as the chairman of the board of Wakefield Country Day School, um, which I'm always proud to promulgate. And uh, I now occupy the best job I've ever had uh, in that capacity. Few disclaimers in case there are any youngsters or I guess adults on the on the call. The best thing to do is always pray, pay your credit card in full when it's due. The presentation is limited to United Airlines, where I concentrate my efforts. Although I'll tell you that um, the airlines, um, the major airlines, always follow very similar programs uh, for their incentives. So uh, about 45 years ago, I'm, I, I love to memorize sayings. I was in the library at college reading a text and uh, I thought the first line was very captivating. So I, I memorized it and it was a lecture by Emile Durkheim. And the first line of the lecture, the public lecture was most of what I say to you this evening, you will not understand, um, which it's a marvelous combination of uh, uh, somewhat of an insult and at the same time being intriguing. And it came back to, my, to mind in preparing my presentation today with the alteration that most of what I say to you today is irrelevant. And that's because travel is not occurring these days. And I don't think any of us are assured when it will continue. I think uh, an example of the magnitude that the travel industry has been faced uh, has faced recently is that airline tickets are down somewhere by between 90 and 95 percent. So Wakefield has a long tradition of travel, and Peggy, Rosita, and I were among several uh, participants in the recent trip to Italy. So here's a picture of us on a bridge, I think in um, Siena with a, our group of 26 um, total who enjoyed a, a marvelous tour uh, in Italy just two months ago. So uh, in 2005, the Today Show had a wonderful series called We're in the World Today, where they sent Matt Lauer to various places around the world and had the audience guess where Matt Lauer was that day. So before we get into the specifics of tricks of the trade, uh, I thought we would uh, have a quick We're in the World Today 
uh, contest. The award is that the first person to send me the correct answer gets a nickel. So uh, I'm going to count to uh, five slowly, and we'll see who comes up with the right response. No answers? Taj wow. Taj Mahal. Whoever said that is correct. Um, I don't Paul, know whether I'm... they're going to say it or chat. Excuse me, Paul. I am not seeing your questions. Um, or you your don't photos. see the slide? No. Yeah. Um, do, do other people see the picture of the Taj Mahal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I wonder what I should. Uh, hmm. Wait. Let me look at know. this. You got a, you've got a great technology oh. partner there, and Jim. Maybe he can. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I do see it now. So good. Okay. All right. Slide number two. This time you get a first correct respondent gets a dime. I'll count to five. Russia. Russia. St. Petersburg. Russia's not good enough. St. Petersburg. No. No. Moscow. St. Basil's. No, you got to name the church. St. Basil's. There you go. Who said that? I did. Peggy. Peggy. Nikki gets a dime. <laughs> All right. I'll keep track. For 15 cents. Ooh. You gotta tell me what time. this is oh. and where it is. That's the feather uh, play egg. Uh, yep. Didn't hear. Fabergé egg. Where's the museum? Uh, St. Petersburg. The Moscow. Ah, Lacey gets 15 cents. <laughs> You're gonna be a rich man by the end. <laughs> Good. Next. This is Ooh. the National Congress building of what country and Ooh. what capital? I'm going to guess Edinburgh. No. I can't see it. Canada. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. and, uh, what, what's what city? Ottawa. 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 There yeah. you go. All right. Now we're going to get more, a little bit more difficult. The most picturesque island in the South Pacific is hmm. Bali. Maui. No. no. Bali. Oahu. Bora Bora. This is ex this is a what do they call it on Jeopardy? A double double down? <laughs> double Jeopardy. Double Jeopardy. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, four. Out of time. That's Bora Bora. Uh. All right. The most a famous uh, American landmark that's actually a national historic site. Ding, ding. Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And what, what makes this site famous? It's the site of Martin Luther King assassination. Jr.'s assassination. Luther there you go. I should get All a right. dollar for that one, Paul. You do, we're up to a dollar. All right, now we're gonna get two more really tough ones, extra credit. This one's worth five bucks. Where is this? Wow. No idea. Yeah, that's why I, I feel safe with my five bucks. <laughs> Latvia. Close. Estonia. 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 What city? Yeah. Riga. No. Uh, no? Wrong country. Yeah. Tallinn. Tallinn. All right. Yes, Tallinn. 
Now at ten bucks, I'm sure nobody's going to get this. Peggy's disqualified. Oh, oh you're disqualified, darn. Peggy. <laughs> Bangkok. No. Hmm. Uh, you know, the Ganges Burma. River. Burma. The, the Ganges River. Uh. Okay. And then last, for your humor, here's a picture of your chairman <laughs> on the far left smoking a cigarette. It's only a cigarette <laughs> in a small village in India. <laughs> All right. With that glorious introduction, let's talk about who wants to travel to Europe for free. Hey, I assume me. everyone. Me I do. Yeah. Next who summer. Who wants to travel to Asia for free? Same. 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 Yes. So we've got some interest. All right. The general lay of the land. Credit card companies buy miles from airlines to give incentives to consumers to apply for their credit cards. So it turns out that selling miles is actually a big part of the income statement of most airline companies. Hmm. Okay, two, credit card companies do this because they get fees on the credit card transactions when you use the credit card. They charge you annual fees for the credit card and they build brand loyalty. Why do the airlines do this? Oh, yeah. See if that works. Airlines get revenue from selling the miles to credit cards and they then use oh. their mileage programs to tie consumers to the airline with brand loyalty. Paul, sorry to interrupt. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Who is that? It's, it's Jim Yellen. I, I was just trying to figure out how to use Zoom. No, I hear you. Hi, okay. Jim. So you might ask yourself, what's a brand worth? Most financial analysts and, observe, and valuation experts will tell you that a brand is worth a large, if not huge amount of money. And all you have to know or observe to confirm that is to watch athletes who wear the Nike swoosh without even the name Nike on it and Nike pays an absolute fortune for this privilege. So there's all kinds of complex formulas and analysis of how to determine a, the worth of a brand. And in fact, even small enterprises that like Wakefield Country Day School, um, believe it or not, we have discussions about our brand and we design some aspect of our marketing budget really to push out, preserve, and enhance our brand in contrast to marketing programs that have a specific call to action. So last general point, if you're just a newcomer to this gig, probably the most important thing is to choose an airline with a hub near where you live. Because this deal is gonna work best if you're near a hub that has flights that go where you wanna go. There's two very different buckets of incentives. The first bucket are award miles. And these are used to redeem flights, free tickets and they appeal to everyone. The second bucket is status miles. Status miles are earned to get you a different and increasing level of status that entitle customers to different benefits. 
the more status you have, for example, United starts at silver, then it goes to gold, then it goes to platinum, then it goes to 1K. Um, I'm a platinum member. What do you get for being platinum? You, I get the first priority on the boarding class, the boarding order. I get cost-free ticket changes the day of the flight. I get increased use of lounges. I get preference on award tickets from bucket number one. And I get preferred seating. This bucket of incentives the, called the status miles, this is really designed to appeal to frequent flyers. You know, people like me who put a lot of value in these um, additional benefits. Last, I'd say it takes a lot of work to learn all the rules involved in how to redeem tickets and, and everything that applies to them. So it's not a simple, easy proposition. Okay, so let's talk and, and keep in mind these two buckets are very different. Different consumers, different appeals, et cetera. So let's talk about the incentives and prepare to get hooked. First and most notably, there's sign-up incentives. So depending on what credit card you sign up for as an individual, you get 50,000 miles. Sometimes you can get up to 100,000 miles. You also get an incentive that they'll waive the first year credit card fee, which can run from 95 to 200 and 495 bucks. Third, you'll get a multiplier on the cost of your airline ticket. So if you buy a ticket for a thousand bucks using that credit card for say United, you'll get 5,000 miles. A legitimate question is what's a mile worth? And you can go out on the internet um, and in the resale market, a mile is generally worth around a penny. When you buy them from airlines, um, they're going to charge you somewhere around two to two and a half cents a mile to buy the miles. Um, my last bullet, my advice is don't do it. Buying miles from the airline is a poor investment. Okay. All right. Trick number one you, when you get started is do you have a spouse or a partner or maybe a friend? So for the incentive period, if you've got a spouse, partner, or friend, you can both apply for credit rather than getting 50,000. Between the two of you, you'll get 100,000. Or rather than getting 100,000, if you've got a really great incentive, you'll get 200,000. So be good to your friend, partner, or spouse, because presumably, if you travel together, um, you know, you'll be able to use each other's miles to your advantage, to your mutual advantage. Trick number two, do you have a business? Because now you can really go to town. If you're like me and you have about 10 to 15 different real estate partnerships, lo and behold, every partnership can qualify for a credit card. So if I've got an incentive deal going of $100,000, 100,000 miles per business, you know, if I just use three or five of my LLCs, now I'm at three or 500,000 miles. In fact, that's how I got into this crazy gig years ago as a friend of mine in uh, Georgia who owns a self storage business as a lawyer and has some other enterprises you know, advise me he's got 3 million miles. Um, so it is possible, and I suppose I should make clear that the actually traveling on an airline is not at all related to or a precondition to, uh, to earning miles. A lot of it is based on non-airline non expenditures. Okay, 
Moving on down. Trick number three. There's two different ways to store your miles. Okay, if you've got a airline credit card that's branded with an airline, like United's Chase card, you can only store your miles with United. But if you get a bank credit card, say Chase, they will give you a war miles that you can allocate to any airline as long as you're a frequent flyer on that airline. So for example, all, a lot of my miles are with Chase. So I only transfer my miles to United when I want a ticket on United. And that is a good policy because one, if United goes bankrupt, I don't have to worry about losing a mm. lot of miles with United. And two is, you know, maybe I want to go somewhere United doesn't fly. Maybe I want to take JetBlue to Iceland. So if I ever wanted to do that, I would join the JetBlue frequent flyer program and transfer my miles to JetBlue. Okay. Trick number three. Trick number four, well, you know, you can, I said earlier that a lot of the incentive deals waive the annual fee for the first year. So what you can do is you could actually apply for a credit card, get your incentive or, of 50 to 100,000 miles and cancel the credit card before the first year and redeem your awards during, before you cancel it, and now you never have any cost. So obviously the credit card companies and the airlines don't really like this, but it is a fact of life. Okay, so now we get to the gravy of, you know, what's a reward ticket cost? Or what is it worth? So I just pulled up in the last day or two um, where you can go one way from Dulles with award miles. So if you want to go to Europe, 30,000 gets you to LHR, which is London Heathrow. 30,000 miles gets you to Munich. And 30,000 miles gets you to Charles de Gaulle. Those are pretty good deals. And um, for those of you who are newcomers to this, or those of you who have a lot of miles, um, award pricing since COVID has actually gotten quite attractive. So this is a good time to be redeeming tickets. And award pricing um, does change um, a great deal depending on the overall market, the time you're flying, your routing, blah, blah, blah. So where else can you go? And these are also attractive deals. These are economy tickets, not first class or business class. But for Asia, to go to Asia, you can go for 35,000 miles, you can go to Tokyo. That's NRT is Narita. 40,000, you can go one way to Bangkok. And 40,000, you can fly nonstop from, to uh, Singapore. That I, I happened to run across because I wanted to provide a, a wide spectrum is that UIO is Quito, Ecuador. You can actually fly to Quito um, for 20,000 miles. That's really cheap. Wow. Also, really cheap are domestic flights uh, within the USA right now. So you can fly from Dulles to San Francisco for 12,500. So these, um, these kind of inexpensive award tickets are very carefully managed by the airlines. They only allocate so many of them, um, particularly at low numbers. As I say, they're date dependent. Um, you do have to pay the tax on the ticket. Um, and you have to shop and uh, uh, be flexible on, on any number of items. Now, 
you know, you don't, you don't have to rely on just this talk. The internet teams with information about this gig and, you know, there's all kinds of sites out there to provide you more detail on what credit card to get, you know, how to keep track of your miles. I, I don't go to any of them. I'm a, uh, know what I want to do and, you know, I'm satisfied with my particular approach and strategy but for those of you who want more information um, like everything else the internet is filled with information so that's where we are um, I'm happy to entertain any questions from anybody should they have any Paul, uh, this is being, oh go, sorry no uh, Paul this is Lacey uh, I, I'm uh, I'm wondering if you have any rule of thumb about how to uh, choose uh, when you're thinking about a specific flight. Let's say you're th thinking about a 40,000 mile uh, uh, flight to uh, Bangkok. Do you have any rule of thumb about how you compare that uh, with uh, what you could uh, uh, get as a price if you were going to pay cash for such a flight and then yeah. if, if you're trying to decide between the two yeah it's a it's a great question Lacey as I would expect from you as a former <laughs> high level official in the State Department uh, a very prestigious career, and by the way, we'd love to get you on the adjunct faculty at Wakefield Country Day School. But um, a lot of your answer uh, depends on this slide here of the two buckets. Um, if you're interested in, and here's the, the gig before this year, um, if you're interested in status miles, meaning getting to platinum or gold or 1K, then it used to be that those status miles were granted based on the air miles flown. So if I could buy a ticket for 600 bucks round trip to Bangkok, um, which is a really cheap price, that is occasionally available. I have to compare that against getting what used to be, what was then uh, 20,000 status miles, because that's the air distance from Dulles to Bangkok round trip. So in that case, I probably would have bought the ticket because for me personally, I wanted to get the status miles so I could get up to the platinum level, which was mm. 75,000 air miles per year. Okay. Now, yeah. in, on January 1st of this year, the airlines changed the way they compute status miles so that now it relates to the cost of your ticket. So the particular incentive that I had to buy tickets was because under the new arrangement to to uh, to platinum because the cost of the ticket is too cheap so I don't get 20,000 miles anymore I get you know maybe the equivalent of 2,000 or 2,500 miles so that gig is over so to get back to your question at, 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 in, in front of us right now is would I rather use 40,000 miles or uh, to get an award ticket or would I rather um, um, buy a ticket for um, 650 bucks? And so you could use the one cent, a, uh, what's, a, what's an award mile worth, one cent a mile to figure that out. Um, but there are also, you know, other factors related, like um, how many miles do you have? I mean, as two million forty, or am I who's 
God I have an incentive and I'm never going to, I'm just doing this for, and I'm not going to renewal fee. You know, I'm just going to use my, so a lot of personal, and that's a long explanation of how the, the, the motivation to buy tickets for status miles purpose is now dead. And you really have to make a personal, more of a personal choice of whether you want to use award miles or to, to, or pay for a ticket. My general approach is I use award miles on really expensive routes. So, cause I, I, I like holding on to my miles. So for example, you know, like I, I might want to be going to, um, to, uh, let's say Stockholm. Okay, and I just I just um, used an award mile to go to Stockholm because the uh, the ticket is really expensive. So there I'll use award miles. If I want to go to Bangkok, the ticket's really cheap, so I won't use award miles. So yeah, I don't know if that helps, but that's yeah, my yeah. answer. Good. Paul, this is Any Jim other? Allen. How are you doing? Yourself. Uh, in a while. Paul, my question, some credit cards you can get back. All the value, why should be better just using card? And uh, what's the relationship yeah. between the, the two not your credit cards? Yeah. Well, it's another great question from my friend, the, my esteemed friend who should also join our faculty and is the former ambassador to Rwanda. Um, you know, the 2% back, uh, again, that, that's never really motivated me because I like to travel. And I think if you consider the numbers on the 2% back, let's just just use an example, suppose you spent a real a whole lot of money on a credit card, a hundred thousand bucks a year. So you're going to get back 2000, but that 2000 is not going to buy me a ticket to Kigali. Right. So I would, I would rather, if I'm a travel person, um, yeah. I would rather go with the travel cards. Now look, they're, they're, you know, the, the travel incentives are just a small portion of the overall credit card incentive business, right? I mean, you can do this with automobiles. You can do this with, you know, I don't know, food, with gas, with everything. I mean, everything's affinity branded. So what I would just say is, you know, do it with the product that is most meaningful to you. Yeah, that makes a lot value of sense. Yeah, thank you. Good. Any other questions? Well, there's a question from um, Mr. Zhao, one of our faculty members. And he says, um, we'll frequently cancel your credit card before the annual fee due affect your credit score. Um, no, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect your credit score. The credit score is, you know, based on your actual credit history. So I don't believe it'll affect your credit score. So look, um, I, I have occasionally done that in the past, maybe once or twice. And, you know, I, you have to be a little cognizant that if, in the business card scenario, you look, if you apply for five new credit cards in, in five months, that actually does affect your, your credit sc score. And on top of that, um, you know, you might bet, get turned down for some of those credit cards. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, would, I would describe, if you do it discreetly, the cancellations discreetly, meaning not that often, maybe once a year, once every two or three years, you just cancel before the renewal. 
I don't think it's any impact, and I would describe it as a P on a four-lane highway. It turns out that you know this is such a huge business for credit card companies that they can't be bothered with you know um, monitoring um, intermittent or discrete cancellations. Um, I have a question. This is uh, Rebecca Hello, one of the teachers at, at school. Um, so we actually have an American Airlines credit card, but you're saying it's the generic credit card and do the airlines through that. My question is, um, with American Airlines, we get to check two bags for free. Um, yeah. And with my daughter going back and forth to school, that's a huge savings. However, she's only a user on my account, so her baggage is only free if I travel with her. So I'm trying to decide what it, I guess I should just look into it. If um, be better just to switch to like a chase card, like you're saying, do you have any input on that? So your choice is between a chase card and an American card, American Airlines direct card. Um, so first, I don't Which know whether yeah. So our American I mean, card's would, actually through like Citibank, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's um, your miles are parked with American. Yes, they are, they're not parked with Citibank. Yeah, and our card so actually how, says American Airlines on it. Yeah. So are are you more interested in award miles or free check bag? Um. Well, both, but I'm I'm trying to figure out which. Would, since she doesn't actually get the free check bagging, I guess I should go for the award miles then, is what I'm trying to figure out. Because she only gets the free baggage if I'm with her. And a lot of times when she comes home, I make her just do a carry-on so she doesn't have to pay that fee. Yeah. That's a good policy in and of itself. Yeah. <laughs> how, about if you did, how about if you did this? You can add her as a, it, probably at no cost, and have her have her own credit card on your account. She does. If that works, for, she does. Mm -hmm. And they still don't give her a free check bag. It really depends on the agent. Every once in a while, they'll give her a free one. But then, when I've even called to dispute it, if they've she's been charged for it, they'll say no. Only the main card holder gets it. Yeah. So depends on if the agent's nice or having a good day. I guess I don't know, but. Yeah. Okay. No, you've been very helpful. Thank so, you. You've answered you, a lot of like the yeah. questions I kind of have been toying with. Like, do you cash in miles? Do we save them? I try to save them for um, like Thanksgiving because that's the most expensive time of the year um, and things like that. So thank you so much. You've been very helpful for me. Yeah. The, the only other thing I would say is you could contact Chase and find out what their rules are for who gets free check bag? Okay, if, great. If your daughter were li were to obtain a Chase card on your account. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, Paul, could I go back and ask you a, a question about the uh, the LLCs and the uh, advisability of uh, taking out? Uh, uh, credit cards uh, on one or more of them. Uh, I, I don't see the utility of that. Uh, uh, wouldn't that, you still have to fly, don't you? Or you have to, uh, in some other way, uh, get miles on the thing. And what what is the advantage of having three cards when you could put it all on one card? Well, the advantage is the incentive. So you get a hundred thousand. The incentive is bigger for businesses. So the advantage is if you've got Lacey Wright LLC, um, you'll get a hundred thousand miles right off the bat. Okay. And you'll get that piece, and then you can transfer it to United. Oh. To your personal frequent flyer account at United. And then you can have Jackie Wright LLC, and you'll get another hundred thousand. I see. Now, okay. when you do that, you know, 
you got to show that, you know, they have an application. So you got to show some kind of substance to the LLC. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. That's uh, been, I mean, that's been my experience. Will they, will they issue a credit card to Lacey Wright LLC that has zero revenue and zero expenses and zero assets? Yeah. I, I, you know, they might, they might. If you told them, you know, you're you're gonna go got, buy a half a million dollar apartment complex, they might. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions? No. Paul, I have a question. Well, how how much yep. of, how much um, do you pay? Do you use your credit card to pay any of your monthly bills, your mortgage or anything like that? Do you, do you think that there's a, I mean, you're being charged a fee for using that card, but is it, is it offset by the points that you get in using that card? Does that make sense? Well, for, for a lot of reasons, I mean, the way America is now is that, you know, pay everything with a credit card so long as, the payment doesn't cost me any money. Right. Now, for example, there's a lot of vendors like the federal government or the state government, if you want to pay your tax bill with a credit card. I think that's stupid because when you figure out the fee, it's not worth it. Or, but suppose I'm, I'm getting a load of gravel delivered from my driveway at 600 bucks. I mean, it, I would say, you know, I put it on the credit card and if they say that there's a fee to put it on the credit card, then I wouldn't because usually the fee they charge exceeds the value of the mines. But most vendors huh. don't charge a fee. So, you know, that's where you have to go to town on this. If you're, huh. you're dedicated is you got to pay for everything with a credit card, which, you know, is, is good because you get the deferral and good because you get the miles. Right. Excellent. All right. How much do you charge to open LLCs for all of us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can all go you know, in you together. Can, you, can, take a group. you can do it on the internet pretty cheap, but, but you know, you do in Virginia, you do have to pay 50 bucks a year and right. the worst thing about, you know, an LLC is, you know, now you got to file a tax return for it right. if you are, are really running a business on it. Super. Well, any other questions for Mr. Larner this morning? We, oh, here's another one from Mr. Rushford, another wonderful adjunct faculty member. Do you also like hotel points cards? Um, same answer. You do the affinity card that is best suited to your lifestyle and needs. So, you know, if, if you, um, you, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a gig or a strategy where you have to concentrate your expenditures on what's most important to you. That's where you get the biggest value. So if hotels are really important to you, let's say, let's posit an example, you like Greg, you go to London one time a year and you wanna stay in the Park Hyatt. So the airline is not that important, but you go there and you wanna spend two weeks. Okay, so now the Park Hyatt is important then I would concentrate on the hotel card. But on the other hand, if you're, you know, a person who likes to travel a lot, but you stay in VRBO apartments, well, there's no credit card for apartments or VRBO apartments, right? There's no affinity card for that. So in that ex example, I would go for the, uh, Airline card. Great. All right. 
Well, this was highly informative. I think we're all gonna be uh, reviewing our credit card statements to see if we're getting the best deal and migrating points or, or whatnot, if we can. So thank you, Mr. Larner. This was really fascinating. We'll all be better off for this particular seminar. So I wanna thank you very much for doing this this morning um, and thank everybody else for attending. Mr. Larner's um, seminar will be on the wcdsva.org website, the Wakefield Country Day School website by this evening. So if anybody missed it or wants to go back and review any of the points that he's made, we'll be able to do that. Um, and so I thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bon voyage. Bon voyage. <laughs>